What's going on, guys? We're here in New York City sitting down with System of a Down. And it's been about, I think, three years since I've seen you guys last or since we've spoken last. How you guys been doing? Good. It's also been about three years since your last record came out. Um, is that part of the reason why this is a double album, or did you just come out with so much material that it had to be split up? Fellatio. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you guys do during your downtime? Were you just writing all the time, or are there any other projects you're I walk my on? dog. Fellatio. We do kind of need you to answer the questions in order to put the interview <laughs> together. Or, I mean, we could just play the one from three years ago where you kind of did the same thing. It's up to you. Fellatio? Back, back, backtrack. Reverse. Moonwalk. I think, I think it's more of balancing the two. Let's moonwalk our ass back. You know when trucks go back? Seriously, man, come on. Answer my questions, damn it. He's like, no. I, I'm gonna make I, I'm you not, suffer. I am answering the question. I, I'm just getting the vibe of your question and I'm answering it in the way that I feel appropriate. How many songs did you end up recording for both records and what is the process of you guys deciding what, you know, what songs go, go on the record or not? Superman told me that we needed to make a double type of record. And so I answered, and I said, okay, Superman, we will make a double type of record, but it won't be a double album because Batman didn't want a double album. Robin did, though. <laughs> awesome. Um, Questions getting any easier for you over there? <laughs> yeah, this is great. Also wanted to ask you about the title of the record. Is it with spiritual meaning, or you know, what are you trying to say with it? It's more important to us of what it means to you than it does what it means to us, I guess. Well, I think people who are your fans definitely want to know how you feel about it because they look to you for a lot of answers. That's why they listen to your music, and a lot of your music is very abstract. If anybody's looking, looking for us or at us for answers, then they're in more trouble than when they started. Yeah. I don't know if it's answers. We're looking for... Yeah, the point for us is to keep it open to interpretation. Because we want everybody to look at it and come up with their own thing. It's kind of to evoke most, some kind most of... Most of the songs are personally about how screwed up I am lyrically in some ways. I had nothing to do with answers. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, all art is really open for interpretation, and that's the beauty of it, that you derive from it what it means to you. But, but that's what we're trying to say. If we explain it, if we explain everything, if we explain like the, what, the, what the words mean, if we explain what the songs mean, if we explain what the name of the album is, then people don't have to think for themselves to come up with their own explanations for these things. And that's kind of the point of it. You wrote a lot more lyrics on this record, Darren, and you also sing a lot more. Was it difficult for you guys to harmonize together um, because your vocals are so different? No, no. It was kind of natural for us to do what we do. When me and Serge met, <clears throat> I was a singer and he was a keyboard player. <laughs> we kind of switched roles and, you know, as this band's mutated, we're kind of moving towards, you know, both of us being kind of a lead singer type of duo, you can say, like uh, Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. It's an interesting comparison. I'm sure you've uh, you've been asked this plenty of times before, but the whole um, play on the words of... Uh, you hate us, don't you? I just, I don't really hate anybody. You just really give me a hard time when I'm trying everybody to... Everybody a hard time, though. It's not, it's not just you. Well, I'm don't trying to... Don't take it so personally. I don't. It's just really annoying. We give, we give each other a hard time. I'm trying but to. But we're uh, annoying. I don't know you on a personal level. Perhaps you are. We, we're extremely annoying people, trust me. It's different when you're on TV and I'm trying to put together an interview that, you know, doesn't come off to kids like you guys are arrogant or whatever, which is but what we are. it kind of comes off. We are. We're very arrogant. Tell the kids we're very arrogant, I just told them. We are very arrogant. And you should be too. <laughs> We're not concerned about how we're perceived. Perception is the mother of deception. The age of very um, difficulty of selling records and fickle fan bases, you guys have an extremely intense fan base that are very loyal to you guys. Why do you think that is and what do you think you know, holds them to you guys? That's a good question. And honestly, we really don't have the answer to that because we have no idea. Well, we've never really catered to album sales, really. You know what I mean? And I think the fans know that. We've, we've kept our integrity, hopefully, I think. <laughs> My opinion is we have. Um, I think kids see that we keep our stuff interesting, so we have fans that are loyal, and that's really cool, and we're blessed. Thank you. Shabba, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, I read that you pretty much had a, you know, renewal of your love for your instrument. 
um, this time around? You know, what inspired you, and I think These why? These guys did. Why did they kind of? I mean, like, I'm listening to a lot of different music that I didn't listen to. Were you before. a little rusty after not touring for two years? No, it wasn't that. It was just that I was a guitar player more in my brain than I was a bass player. But I was a bass player. That's what my job, and and I looked at it as that. And then I stopped looking at it as that. And I started listening to the bass more when I listened to music instead of hearing the guitar more. And I love my instrument now, so. That's awesome. It's cool. I was a prostitute on the street. <laughs> you obviously didn't of, do too well for Hollywood. yourself. That's why you had to become a musician. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. I was, as a kid, I was traded in the black market a couple of times. And I ended up on the streets of Hollywood. And then I ended up in System of a Down. And Shava was the guitar player, but then I took the guitar from him. He did actually. And and he said, "Be a bass player, man." <laughs> yeah. Because right. I'm tired. <laughs> you guys are doing a guerrilla uh, style club tour, doing smaller places instead of larger venues, which you could easily do. Why do they call it guerrilla? We're inviting guerrillas. Oh. A lot of the venues that we're playing are venues we played when we first started touring, so it is pretty cool to go back to that. And the way we're doing it, you can only get tickets at the venues. You can't buy them and like take a master or get them on the internet. Well, that's what guerrilla style means. I mean, I, I don't know what the definition of it is. It means kind of like when you go from <laughs> like one place to another place without necessarily organized or properly production scheduled stuff. Like guerrilla shooting is like you kind of show up, you shoot, you get what you get. Like I said, it's it's small venues that we played, you know, originally when we first started touring. And we're just going back to that because the vibe is totally different when you're playing a small venue mm -hmm. as opposed to an Absolutely. arena, obviously. For us, it's also for us, you know, to go back to that and start over. Because in a lot of ways, musically, we feel like we've taken it to a new level. But we want to step back and relive what we did in the past in a lot of ways, too. That's awesome. I think it's awesome for the kids to be that close and personal. It's also really good for us. I want to talk a little bit about Souls, which is kind of like a, a concert that you guys have been doing for three years. and. Um, you have a lot of booths with like organizations kind of bringing awareness and teaching kids about all, all the stuff that's going on in the world that they might not be aware of. And is it a little difficult for you guys to get that message across, especially because you can't personally come out in the crowd and talk to these kids? We actually uh, utilized one of your cameras to take them to each of the booths and had each of the people at the booths at the Soul Show uh, represent that organization and talk about the cause and whatnot. We set up eight different organizations, uh, each with their own booths to pass out uh, information about their own different particular causes. We've got Access of Justice, we've got Amnesty International, Facing History, Cambodian Student Society, Darfur Action Committee, the Armenian National Committee of America. When I started Access of Justice to provide a, an avenue to distribute information about things that people wouldn't necessarily see at a rock event or anything like that. And with Souls, we've kind of, you know, based that on the whole genocide factor. It's better when a, a Holocaust is recognized or a genocide is recognized, and that at least starts the road to recovery and, and reconciliation and reparation. I think each of the cause speaks for itself. We don't really need to get out there and preach or anything like that. We, we like to let the music speak for itself. Um, people also associate you guys a lot with politics because obviously you're very out outspoken about your opinions on it. It's a um, little uh, misconception though, I think. That's what I was going to ask you about. I mean, we've always had only like three, maybe three songs out of 14 that are somewhat political. Most of our songs are either personal stories or social or humorous or about sex or th whatever, theorizing or mental masturbation. I think it's journalists that overly... Prostitution, don't forget that. Prostitution. There <laughs> are, some of the songs are about prostitution, yeah, for God's sake. You'll hear it. Yeah. I think journalists like to overwhelmingly um, concentrate on the political end. Yeah, they should legalize prostitution too. I agree. I think I think that's about it. But um, I think we have some. You sure? Yeah. Well, we're sorry. <laughs> you want to know what's funny? Now that your show is a little bigger, you guys have gotten a little bit more cockier because Dude, last I was time. Because your ass last the first time, time, time around, I just didn't know what to say because you were like my second interview ever. So I was kind of like. Stunned as to why you were being such jerks to me. We've stayed the same. You guys have changed. <laughs> no, dude, I think I've just dealt with it enough where I just don't want to deal with bull anymore because I'm trying to promote you or try to work with you and make a good show, and you guys are making it really difficult, and that's your problem because this is your interview, well, so it's you really your time. Would you like to not air it? 
Dude, because whatever, man. I'm not here to argue with you at all. It's <laughs> not my job. You're not, really, you're not really understanding the point of what's going on. Well, what's the point of what's going on? Tell us. Well, I think part of what we're trying to say is that um, in every answer, there's also a question. And not everything is clear. Not everything's clear for us. We don't need to talk you. about what our songs are about. There ain't no rule in this game. Just the reason why we write songs the way we do is because there's no rule in this game. So when we do interviews, we do an interview any way we want to do an interview, just like the way we write our songs. We don't write our songs for the radio. We don't write our songs for your MTV or your channel. We write our songs for ourselves. Now, if you guys want to cover our band, that's cool with us. If you don't, then that's cool with us, too. You know what I'm saying? We told, we told a bunch of people years ago, it's like if sometimes they want to put like only the singer on the cover of a magazine, well, we're like, you know what? We're a band of four people. We yep. only have we four people. It. If you don't want four people, then we don't want to be on the cover of your magazine. That's why. If, if to answer all your questions of why the band is big or why the album is successful or why blah, because we're honest and we just don't give a <laughs> and that's fine. And but that's what's gotten us to where we've gotten. And it's not about but being an because we don't feel you. like we're being an because I've insulted myself as much as I've insulted you. Well, that's fine. You take that as it is, and I take it as I do. So, Fair enough. it's all good. I think that was good footage, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the only part that's gonna air. So I was telling you before <laughs> about the interview that I got mad at one on you know right before this one. They kept asking me to explain things about us and I didn't want to explain I told him and then he yeah, asked and then you know what he told me he goes you, you know maybe the success has gotten to your heads and I said you know what we've been doing this for 10 years we haven't changed for 10 years just like he said I told him the same I'm actually nicer than I was I back then I was before I joined this band I used to beat fools down for no reason it's not about being <laughs> nice or not it's just that you know I think because you don't answer these questions and whatever that's what the people questions are, really are your trip your the questions are not my trip and, and the questions and so, are mine and your audience. Like, this yeah, is what but, yeah, people want to know about you, you that they don't. You, you interview someone not based on your trip. You interview someone, you know, based on their trip. And you, you let them speak their mind in their interview. And if I feel like talking about fellatio and prostitution, then you should uh, you should adjust to my vibe. Fellatio? Pros prostitution. Fellatio? Whatever, dude. <laughs> Whatever. It's really hard to, to expand on anything when you're going to give me one-word answers anyway as you've done before, as you've yeah. done again. But what if so that whatever. one word answers the question? We were yeah. last time to you, right? You said that to me at the whiskey once. You said, you were an asshole to me. And I told you, yes, I was an asshole to you. And if I'm like sitting here denying anything, that's a different situation, you know? But I'm not denying nothing. Okay. I could be the world's biggest but I could also be the world's nicest guy. And you've seen that when the cameras are off. Because I don't like to pretend you know, about be, being important or nothing right now, like, you know, with these questions. And we're not important. We're a band. We play music. There's guys that plumb, and if your was clogged up in the toilet, you, need more you would be asking him a lot more questions than you'd be asking so me. So why are you here? Why are because you wasting your really time and hours as well? I just woke up like 10 I'm minutes ago next door. If you want I don't to think it's a waste of time. I if you think it's wrong. a waste of time, then I'll leave. I don't, but you don't want to be here. You no, it doesn't matter to me so either way. Here? If I'm here, I'm going to answer the questions the way I'm going to answer the questions. I don't. It's not a waste of time for me. If it's a waste of time for you, then leave. It's not, though, dude. Okay, that's why we're here, because we like your band, and we want to get the information that kids want to hear, because we right. respect your music Right, but we also have to give not. the information that we want to give, not the information that you want to, to have. I understand what you're saying. I also understand what we're saying. You're taking it too personally. The yeah, reason why we're doing it is because we might actually band. like you. We like you. I'm not you're taking it personally. Person. I'm taking it towards this show, and not on a personal level. I know you're not. But we like this show. I love Fuse. We wouldn't be I sitting do. here doing this. I can't. I can't didn't like the show. Uh, in, or in I would. With, with Tom and I, would. <laughs> you know, I did my stuff on Fuse. I didn't even go to MTV because I, I like what you guys do. The way we answer questions isn't going to change just because we like you guys. I mean, that that has nothing to do with it. I talk to my mom the same way. She gets nothing out of me. <laughs> Well, there it is, you guys. <laughs> and on that note, I'm out. <laughs> cool. Thank you. That was great. You're welcome. Man. I think that went very well. <laughs> I mean, I, I appreciate you guys being here, but we don't want you to look bad for your fans. And I think we look it comes just off fine. different. But you know what? You should just let us. Look I think the way that's that a we risk. Look. I think that's a risk you gotta let us I, take. I, we appreciate the protection. Yeah. Because that really means you guys care, and we appreciate that. Right. No, like, but but whatever we do is whatever we do, and we're not scared of being who we are. And, Whatever the moment, even if even if it's this information, even if we don't believe in what we're saying, it doesn't really matter ultimately. If if we take ourselves too seriously, 
<laughs> what are you doing? I'm filming, bro. Just start talking. <laughs> then then we'll miss the whole thing. Also, don't interview us when we first wake up. I think it's a lesson learned here. You guys just woke up? I think it's Not also me. four of us being interviewed together. <laughs> yeah, we usually do bad four of us together. Why? I don't know. Usually you get interviewed separately? Yeah, but two by two. I mean, whatever. I'm just, I'm just trying to explain our perspective versus your perspective. It's not that's... a big deal. I think it was a great interview. I'm sorry. You guys are. That was very interesting. I thought it was interesting. I'm We've done a lot of interviews. I think it would be a good cut, cut like good edits. A lot of tense feelings going on. Yeah. Yeah. Angry in her face. I captured. I captured everything. Julia's face. Julia's face. <laughs> so Julia. Yes. Why are you upset? Don't be upset. I'm so not upset. Are you sure? She hates me. I'm not upset. <laughs> but you look upset. I know the look of frustration and... Frustration? Yes. But not upset. Okay, well, don't be frustrated. She feels disrespected. I'm done. I'm not frustrated anymore. We're not anymore. disrespecting you, and you know that. Did you, dude, okay, I don't do you, feel disrespected. I just... Whatever, dude. It's... But dude, do you think we're done, disrespecting so you? I know it's not No, done, we're dude. still interviewing. Interview not done. <laughs> we're not done. We just reversed it on you, so... <laughs> I don't think you're disrespectful. I think you guys have your own sense of humor, which yes. you as a group yes. understand, yes. which many other people don't. You really? Which is fine. You're right. you're right. It's funny because our music is part of our sense of humor, and if we've sold that many records, it seems like people are getting it. Hey. If you said people don't understand. I said certain people don't understand. Like who? The red like, states? I mean, I understand right, yeah. everything you've explained, to me, you know what I mean? But it's just like, whatever. Dude. I think the one thing that you're not grasping is that all the stuff he's saying, sometimes I don't understand it initially either. But if if you look at Darren, he may seem like he's a d sometimes, but there's always... <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. But there, what I've noticed knowing him for all these years, it, whatever he says, there is always a meaning behind it. You, sometimes you have to search I for that meaning. I swear on my life, once you hear both records, you will say, Okay, I know what he was talking about. And I as much as he's being a d life, there is a meaning behind it. <laughs> Sometimes you have to search for that meaning. And we may not be the easiest interview in the world, you know? So, yes. Yeah, so but there is something there. And if you search for it, you'll find it. And don't take it personally, because if we took things personally, this band would not exist. We don't mean you any harm or your program, you know? I'm sure you don't. I don't really take it like that. It's it's not you like seem that. like perplexed, and that's kind of cool for us. You but know? you weren't like this last time. I have to say, I've done a whole interview in falsetto. He has, like Mickey Mouse. I have. For like a lot it's of kids, good. walk up to me and say, "Wow, your voice isn't really that high pitched." It wasn't a mean thing. It wasn't a bad thing. I'm just f around. Okay, guys, I think we're gonna end this now. Sure. <laughs> you both just. I'm enjoying this. Though. I don't want to end it. I want to be here. <laughs>